Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a macroeconomics video. Uh, some of the key factors influencing consumer confidence and the importance of sentiment in shaping turning points in economic cycles uh, are going to be explored in this short revision video. Now, there are many factors that have an impact on the level and growth of household spending on goods and services in the wider macro economy. And this slide provides, I hope, a helpful, handy summary of five key factors. Keynesians would talk about real disposable incomes as being important. That's income after direct taxes and benefits, and of course, adjusted for the effects of inflation. Many people's spending power and willingness to commit to spending is determined by whether they have a full-time or part-time job, and the, the uh, sense that their job is secure and that their monthly income uh, is predictable. Confidence, for example, amongst people in the gig economy, where many people are on zero-hours contracts, is, uh, is more fragile. Uh, for some people, the level of their net household wealth is critical. The value of their property relative to the uh, debt on a mortgage, uh, what's happening to their share prices, for example, the wealth effect can impact on consumer spending. And for others, the interest rate on savings or the cost of borrowing a loan uh, is also a factor. But the fourth factor there mentioned, consumer confidence, expectations and sentiment. In a sense, consumer confidence brings all of these factors together. The level of economic uncertainty at a macro level uh, can influence our spending today. Uh, when uncertainty is rising, people tend to spend a little less and save more. When animal spirits are improving, the Keynesian concept of animal spirits, people tend to spend more and that lifts aggregate demand. So consumer confidence is a key variable in the macro economy and it tends to try to measure nearly always through surveys uh, people's attitudes uh, and expectations going forward of what is likely to, likely to happen not only to the wider economy but also to people's own financial positions. We find that consumer confidence tends to have quite a big impact on people's willingness to make a big purchase, perhaps a new car, uh, perhaps a home improvement of some, some type. Those big ticket spending decisions are shaped by consumer confidence. So what has happened to confidence over the years in recent times for the UK? Well, this chart provides some data since 1997. You can see that consumer confidence ebbs and flows. Uh, typically, by the way, it's a negative number. That means there are more pessimists than optimists. It's a net balance of percentage terms. Uh, for the year ahead and people are asked to think about the next year and whether they're more or less optimistic or perhaps neutral. Some key moments of course crucially the global financial crisis 2007-2008 caused a sharp fall in confidence that was amplified during the recession year of 2009. Pick up uh, in 2009 and 10 but fears of a double dip recession in 2012. Then we've had a period of improving confidence uh, that took a dip after the Brexit vote. More generally, confidence has been declining in recent times, although not to the extent that it was uh, the sharp fall in sentiment uh, during the last recession. Well, we know in 2020 that the next move in consumer confidence is likely to be in a downwards direction. This data, by the way, takes us up to January and February of 2020. And there are, of course, now many risks to consumer confidence. The recession risk arising from the uh, coronavirus pandemic. The IMF uh, and other economists are now saying that the world economy, the global economy, is already likely to be in recession as many countries shut down production and uh, people movement. There's also the risk of a, of a housing market downturn. House prices in the UK, for example, in some parts of the country are already falling. And the rate of change of property prices has been declining. We've seen big falls in stock market prices. In the United States, the market moved into bear market territory and uh, the value of leading shares has been cut across the board in many parts of the world. There's even um, prospects, perhaps fears, expectations that interest rates could become negative. Uh, they've become negative in countries such as Switzerland and Denmark and Japan. Savers, for example, might be worried that uh, their deposits might be hit by negative uh, nominal rates and, of course, already negative real interest rates. And there are also some longer-term residual fears. In, partic in particular, people worried about uh, the long-term viability 
of pension systems, including private occupational pensions and how much the real value of the state pension would be worth. So there are some quite significant negative um, headwinds impacting on consumer confidence as I'm recording this video, which is in the middle of March 2020. So what are those links between consumer confidence and the macro economy? The good economist, <clears throat> pardon me, the good economist really always does make these synoptic connections. The key point I want to stress in this video is that expectations of the future, be it the next few months or the next year or two, or even going forward further, expectations of the future drives our behavior today. That's always been the case. It's something that uh, psychologists have understood. And Keynes was perhaps one of the great macro psychologists of his age. Fears of recession, for example, can lead to consumer behaviours that then make a recession perhaps more likely. Let's work through this. If people fear a downturn, a recession, they might decide to save more of their disposable income because of uncertainty. That then depresses aggregate demand. The propensity to save goes up. The marginal propensity to consume goes down. So that depresses aggregate demand for goods and services, which then has a knock-on negative effect on output, jobs and investment, and ultimately could lead to a fall in real incomes. So the idea that savings going up could actually make people poor is widely known as the paradox of thrift. Definitely worth thinking about in the next few months. Now, much depends, of course, on the extent to which macroeconomic policies can respond to an economic shock or a crisis. Um, how effective, for example, are cuts in policy interest rates? The UK rate is now down to 0.25%, but essentially central bankers have run out of bullets in terms of interest rate cuts. And there are severe doubts as to whether these kind of low interest rates are actually driving higher demand. Is fiscal policy better than monetary policy at helping to stabilise confidence and therefore stabilise demand and spending. It could be the case that the government holds the key, uh, perhaps with temporary targeted measures affecting certain industries, certain groups of households, for example, to help families and businesses through tough times. Look to see examples in the news of targeted and perhaps temporary fiscal measures designed to, to underpin consumer confidence. But if the government borrows more and spends more or cuts taxes now in a big way, does a big fiscal policy stimulus actually undermine confidence because people might now start expecting taxes to be higher in the future? Well, that's an evaluation point which is well worth putting in to any kind of question on fiscal stimulus. So hopefully this has provided you with a little bit of an update on why consumer confidence is important and how changes in sentiment changes in animal spirits can uh, can cause movements oftentimes turning points in a country's economic cycle okay thank you very much indeed